It's time for more Kurtz Gazat. Specifically, why is the U.S. dropping billions of nuclear flies from the sky, as one does? Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. Right now, 100 million radiation-blasted, flesh-eating flies are raining down over the jungles of Panama uh, to commit a genocide uh. that can never end. Their tiny bodies are rebuilding a wall of flesh that protects an entire continent. <laughs> okay. Is this what the conspiracy theorists think are coming out of vapor trails of planes? All this green weirdness? This is one of humanity's most successful wars, going on for over 50 years now. Oh, we're talking about the sterile insect technique. Okay, so in this case, you're just irradiating them enough to sterilize them. You're not doing it so much that it impedes their ability to mate or fly, and let's face it, no amount of it is going to make it into some kind of crazy nuclear insect theme supervillain, despite what comic books might tell you. Fought from Central America to the deserts of Libya. Okay, so what's going on? The unbeatable flesh-eating fly. We need to talk about one of the most terrifying parasites on Earth for a moment. Don't worry, we won't make it too gross. If you want to skip this part, jump to the next chapter. Cochleomyia hominivorax, which literally means the man-eater the New World Screwworm fly at home in the Americas. Each of these metallic blue-green flies with the bright red eyes that exist in nature is here because it's feasted on the flesh of a warm-blooded animal. Cochleomyia can detect wounds and smell blood across vast distances. Okay, we're looking through from the perspective of a fly. What's interesting is flies' eyes are a different band of radiation detector than human eyes. Humans can see about 400 to 700 nanometers. Flies see 300 to 600, so a little bit of UV, blue, and green. Not so much yellow, so in fact, flies are strongly attracted to UV light. Just different types of radiation detectors. If a human, a deer, or a squirrel has the tiniest scratch, female screwworm flies will try to lay eggs in the wound. When they hatch, the worms start eating healthy flesh mm -hmm. with sharp mandibles, causing horrible wounds, attracting even more flies. In serious cases, the animal will die, or at least be severely weakened. Cochleomyia doesn't add anything positive to the world, and is a natural enemy of ours. Yeah, laying creatures in you and causing them to burst out like an alien. Yeah, that's never a good thing. So, I get it. Makes them a good target for sterilization. For most of history, this parasite was simply a horrifying fact of life in the Americas. And then, we accidentally created a paradise for them. As farmers introduced millions and millions cows, of cows to the vast stock. expanses of the southern U.S., screwworms became a ca I mean, basically supply and demand, and you're giving them a fuel source. ...catastrophic problem and a source of endless suffering for our defenseless cattle. One outbreak might wipe out herds and lead to cruel, lingering deaths for countless animals in the wild. Traditional pesticides were useless against cochleomyia because you couldn't poison something that it's lived in inside there. a living animal's flesh. You couldn't prevent... Not without harming the living animal, anyway. ...and animals from getting injured or flies from finding wounds. The situation seemed hopeless and cochleomyia was winning. Ranchers had to spend countless hours examining their herds, treating wounds, trying to protect newborns, mm. watching helplessly as their animals suffered. And then two scientists in the 1950s had an idea that was too wild to be taken seriously at first. What if we kind of nuke the screwworms? <laughs> oh, here we go. No, a place like this with green smoke billowing out of it does not describe the place where I work. <laughs> <laughs> Radioactive parasite factories. Screwworm flies have a major weakness. Female cochleomyia can lay up to 400 eggs multiple times. Mm. But they only mate a single time before they die at the ripe old age of three weeks. So what if we could somehow disrupt the mating process? What if we could flood the environment with sterile... Oh, here we go. The flies aren't radioactive, but have been ex exposed to radioactivity, and for the artistic purpose, we sometimes let them grow glow green. Okay, that's true. And uh, what you're gonna and what you're gonna use is a gamma source or an X-ray source. 
something like Cobalt 60 would work. Because it is a gamma emitter. It's also a beta emitter, but the gamma emitter is doing the work for this project. And radiation does not spread like a virus. That's one misconception that came out of the HBO Chernobyl show. But what this would do is put a sufficient number of population that is infertile. So you do this to males, make them sterile, and don't irradiate them so much that it impedes their ability to mate or to fly. And they compete with wild males for females, and you can get enough of these, then they're going to end up mating with some of the wild females, and they're not going to produce any offspring. You do this enough, then a sufficient portion of the population is going to die out. Male flies. The females would waste their one and only chance at reproduction on males that couldn't produce offspring. An entire species could theoretically mate itself out of existence. But how do you sterilize millions of flies without killing them or making them too weak to compete for mates? Precise amount of radiation does. Well, it turned out the timing to do this was kind of perfect. Scientists studying the effects of radiation had discovered that specific doses could damage reproductive cells while leaving the rest of an organism intact. Radi uh, fast dividing cells are most vulnerable to the effects of radiation. So reproductive cells are a prime target. So all we needed to do was figure out how high this dose was for cochlea mya, breed millions of flies, irradiate them, and release them over thousands of square kilometers. Imagine explaining this idea to someone in 1950. Imagine... Yeah. <laughs> of course, even explaining this now, with all the misinformation there is out there about radiation, but yeah, in 1950 especially, would be even more challenging. In a way, these irradiated males become control rods to essentially absorb the energy used in mating opportunities without causing offspring. The scale of the damage and the suffering that Cochlea Maya caused for people to say, OK, sure, let's try this. Why not? To prove this could work, scientists built a screw worm paradise in Florida and shipped millions of flies of course, to the Florida. remote island of Curacao. Long trays were filled with ground beef and horse meat, animal blood, milk and eggs. Thousands were bred, irradiated and released into the wild in regular... In they said bread. They looked like loaves of bread. Intervals. As the weeks and months passed, more and more of the cochlea mire on the island were infertile and mated with regular ones. Basically using an invasive species. First slowly, and then suddenly, they were no more. Completely eradicated. It was time to think much bigger. Over the next few decades, a war was declared and professional worm factories established to breed them by the billions. A single plant in Texas alone needed 70 tons of meat and 12,000 gallons of blood to breed 150 million flies per week. The disgusting mix had to be... Industrial scale levels of production here we're talking, okay. ...kept warm because they had to believe they were inside a living animal. This lovely process made the insects smell so bad that airlines initially refused to transport them. Their transport boxes had to be sprayed with cologne just to with get them cologne. on planes. <laughs> bit by bit. Good old 1950s technology. Also, the part about 1950s that might have been easier to explain is a lot of people were generally more pro-nuclear because it was brand new, cutting-edge technology, and people didn't much understand the ill effects in the general population. Obviously, the scientists knew at this point, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to see this in action. In a slow-moving wave of biological warfare, the program eradicated screwworms. First from Florida, then across Texas, through Mexico, and into Central America. Every step required billions of sterile flies, massive coordination, and unwavering dedication from thousands of workers. It's interesting because you kind of see this as sort of a chain reaction, but you, in, but you insert something disruptive and it acting like a control rod that essentially just shuts down the whole reaction because even a small impact, and of course they just ramped up production a lot, you eventually reach a critical mass, if you will, of these sterile flies that are eventually going to outnumber and displace all of the wild flies. It was an incredible victory of humanity over the horrors of nature. In 1988, the war suddenly became global, and for the first time ever, screwworms escaped to Africa. 
The stakes were astronomical. If not stopped immediately, flesh-eating cochlear mire could move down the Nile Valley, around the North oh, African yeah. coast, and conquer That's regions fast. where medical care was scarce or non-existent. The potential suffering was incalculable. Yeah. To stop this invasion, a Herculean operation was triggered immediately. <laughs> Hundreds of millions of sterile oh, flies awesome. were flown in. Ground teams inspected millions of animals for wounds. Communication campaigns explained to locals why planes were dropping boxes full of millions of flesh-eating American flies. But it worked. In just four months, the invasion was stopped. And radiation is an ideal tool to do this with because radiation penetrates deeply, especially gamma radiation we're talking about. So you don't need to add any chemicals in order to ensure sterility in this case. And there's no radioactive residue in terms of contaminants. It's just absorbed dose within the fly. So it doesn't really make a mess. So it, it's actually quite environmentally friendly, if you will, more so than pesticides. And it's repeatable and reliable. I mean, statistics, Monte, Cal Monte Carlo simulations, all on nuclear side in terms of repeatability because of the law of large numbers so many gammas are hitting such a large population of flies it gets very very predictable and repeatable and scalable they had a pretty good sense of how many facilities are going to be needed to get the job done i mean it essentially acts like a well-tuned reactor but cochlear maya still held a firm grip over the amazon rainforest and much of south america an area too large, politically complicated and expensive to expand the war further. So a deal was made with Panama, the narrowest part of the continent. The US and Mexico would pay for a wall of flesh in the small country. It huh. US and Mexico working together on a wall. All right. It would prevent any screw worms from reaching the north ever again. Today, deep in Panama, a nuclear worm factory runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nuclear producing an endless stream of sterile flies. The technology has come a long way from the early days. Instead of ground meat, a brown protein sludge made from powdered blood, milk and eggs is piped into trays stacked in rooms kept at exactly the same temperature as living tissue. Sure, more efficient, just like advances in nuclear fuel technology. Well, nuclear comma fuel in this particular case. Thousands of flies are then carefully irradiated with precise doses of radiation, creating cochlear mire that acts normal, but are dead inside. And in case you were wondering, these flies don't become radioactive themselves. They put this note, okay, they look the same, which is good, because you want to basically trick the wild flies in order to pull this off. And... There's no increased risk of radiation dose for handling these flies. Now the, the radiation, now the radiological controlled environment would be the areas that you're physically irradiating the flies, but that's no different than irradiating anything else or working in a radiological controlled area in a nuclear power plant. Each week, 100 million flies are loaded into rotating dispersal machines to be released mid-flight in a finely tuned... Not sure why you see them wearing respirators. I mean, the main hazard we're talking about is gamma radiation, and it's not particulate-based. It's more of, you know, controlled beam-like based from a source. So it makes about as much sense as people wearing respirators when operating an X-ray machine. But maybe there's some other chemicals that are used in the plant that I don't know about balance of drop rate, speed and altitude. The flight paths are separated by precisely 1.6 kilometers in a choreographed aerial ballet, creating like an invisible thing, wall sort of. of sterile flies. Surveillance teams cover some of the most remote and challenging terrain to check animals for injuries and monitor for any sign of screwworm activity. It'd be cool if their office actually looked like that. Unfortunately, right now, the wall is failing and the war against cochlear mire is far from over. Cochlear Maya strikes back. Uh -oh. Like the Empire? In 2016, Cochlear Maya somehow made their way back to the Florida Keys, turning the Paradise Islands into a nightmare. Key deer were suddenly walking around with gaping wounds. Millions of sterile flies were mm. rushed in from Panama, creating a it's an outbreak. front around the outbreak and beginning the eradication again. Within months, the invasion was at least contained. And in late 2023, the wall in Panama failed and cochlear mire struck back immediately. Like a parasitic firestorm on speed, it spread again all over Panama and Costa Rica. Burning Reminds me of Plague Inc, except you're 
making a counter plague for the plague. Through Central America and even reaching Mexico. The worm factory now produces sterile worms at maximum capacity. It's a real biological emergency and it's not clear when it will be over. But one day we might be able to win the war against this horrible monster. We did so before and other parasites have been eradicated from much of the world or... I mean, it's really a matter of just getting the funding you need and having the sense of early detection to prevent these sort of spreads. But what I just find interesting is this is a good example that they brought up of precisely controlled radiation, which is typically seen as a hazard, and it often is, as a tool for ecological engineering, radiation helping the environment, ionizing radiation nonetheless. It's again, non-invasive and highly reliable. Even in tardy. So if you find yourself in Central America and see a low-flying plane overhead, maybe you're witnessing another day in one of humanity's most unusual wars. A war we can never stop fighting and can't afford to lose. Hmm. No animals harmed in the making of this video. Well, that's good to know. Good seeing a positive use. Good seeing yet another positive nuclear application. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.